Hello, what is up guys? Evil Duos Time here today, back with another Black Desert video. In today's video, we're gonna be continuing our leveling guide series where we are leveling levels one through 61 via questing only here in Black Desert. So yeah, today's episode is the final culmination episode of 60 to 61. So if for some reason you have missed any of the guides, they are in my leveling guides playlist. We also have the guide on picking up the Chenga Tome, which is required in order to do these leveling guides. So make sure you have a Chenga Tome before following any of these videos in the series. But yeah, 1 through 56, 56 to 7, 7 to 8, 8 to 9, 9 to 60 is also going to be up there. That was already recorded yesterday, didn't upload it yet, but yeah, all those guides will be in here. If you are a console player, you will need to watch the 2021 version because this 2022 version is for PC only. So the 2021 version works for console. I'll change the title of this once these videos are all uploaded to saying console only. But anyway, that's probably enough intro stuff, so quickly before we get started, if you are new to my channel, new to Black Desert, or you have been watching videos on my channel and you still have not subscribed yet, please consider it. Helps to grow my channel, you stay up to date with new content, I cover tons of MMORPGs, so would really love the help. Anyway, without further ado, let's get into it. So if you remember from the previous episode, we just finished off Viv Red Hamlet and it took us down into the Old Wisdom Tree. So the Old Wisdom Tree itself has a ton of different quests that you can pick up at it, none of which are obtained from this work supervisor, so don't talk to him. But if we hop onto our horse here and head down underneath the tree, over through here, underneath the tree, you will see a quest available from the blacksmith right here, so we'll take that one. You'll see a quest right here from this NPC, and you'll see a quest from this NPC. If you continue to loop up and around and turn left through these gates, you should see another series of quests that you can pick up from this NPC. So you'll take those quests, and that's going to loop you back up and around into the old wisdom tree area itself. So if you go into the tree, one of the quests we picked up at another one of these previous locations will also show up inside of this tree and allow you to continue on through it in here. So I believe it's to talk to one of the NPCs sitting in here. Right here, you have another quest line that you'll be able to continue through. Um, there's also one more set of quests that do award EXP. It's from this guy, but it involves killing kind of difficult mobs. I am going to skip this one in this leveling guide video. However, if you have higher gear than I do, because once again, I'm just playing through with story gear, just story crap gear that you get, plus the Kaposha earring because I was too lazy to pick up the Eternal Winter earring, but it's basically the same stats. But anyway, if you have better gear than that, feel free to do that quest. But once again, I'm skipping it. So anyway, um, yeah, I will see you at the end of this. And I lied, one more thing, 12 hours, 47 minutes right now. So I'm going to write that down and we will see how long it takes to get to 61. Okay, see you in a minute. I missed one quest, just want to make sure you get it, but next to this NPC where you like went through the gates, right, there's another NPC hidden behind this wall right here. Make sure to pick up the quest from them, and then they're going to take you up to this NPC. This NPC gives you a fishing quest. Skip this quest. It sucks. Okay, now we can continue. All right, so finishing up in this area is going to net you 15.6-ish percent EXP, and you're also going to have a quest that is going to send you back over to the Viv Ferretta Hamlet. So this is like the completion of a quest. You can kind of just right out there and turn in this quest, so I'll meet you up at the Viv Ferretta Hamlet. Alright, turning in that quest is going to give you another 1.3% EXP, and that'll finish off the quest lines, dropping you off at 17%. Next location that we are going to head to is going to be the Ahib Conflict Zone. So this is the location on the map. Um, if you haven't explored Duvinkrun or the region before, this is where you need to head, so keep clicking in this area until you see a path that looks like this. I'll meet you over there now. All right, we have two quest lines that we can pick up here. They're sort of up at like the top of the Ahib conflict zone, so up at this top region of the camp. Uh, first one is right here, and the second one is right here. So play through these two quest lines. Um, don't worry about the other ones, just these two quest lines and pick up some EXP. I'll see you in a second. So that's another six-ish percent EXP for literally doing nothing. It takes like less than a minute to pick it up there, and we can now move on to the next location, the Marcha Outpost. So navigate over here, but you're actually going to want to stop before the bridge because there's a quest before the bridge to march outpost, so I'll meet you over there. So when you get to the bridge and cross over the bridge, you should see an NPC right here that's going to send you on a little uh, adventure. So it's not really an adventure, you just need to climb the mountains over here um, and complete that quest. So actually, we'll skip that. It's just tuck and climb those mountains and click on a button. Uh, then we can get into the outpost itself, and in the outpost you have a couple of quests you can do. So right here there's one, and right here there is one. So these quests are like little consecutive ones. Make sure to complete everything in this area. I'll see you back here in a second after we've done these quests. So knocking out the quests in this area are going to get at you another 5.2% EXP, and the next quest that you receive here is going to take you to the location. So someone to share a drink with is going to take you to the Gaik Altar, which is the next location we are heading. I will meet you over there. 
All right, so turning in this quest is going to open up a ton of other quests in the area. So first things first, there should be a couple of quests here. Well, there's one quest right here and one quest right here in the first camp. The Gaia Galter is broken into four different camps. The next camp we're going to head to is up this path over this way. So I will follow the path marker that I just dropped here, head up the path, and then you will take a right, and you'll see another camp down here that has a couple of quests. So you'll take these quests. Then the next location we're going to head to going from this camp is going to be straight out in this sort of direction here. So ride through the main camp, over, around, and down this path, cross this bridge. And then after you get across the bridge, you should see some huts down here to the right. So this is the third camp that has quests. So pick up the quests that are located in this one. Do note that after you complete some quests, more quests are going to pop up in this camp. So be sure to check it again before you leave, or if you're off a different EXP from me. But then heading from that camp, you should see a horse farm located over here. And there is one quest here. So four camps of the Gaik Altar. Make sure to complete all the quests in here. Check all of the locations before you move on to the next location or before you move on to the next part of this video. Make sure you've got the same amount of EXP as me. I'll see you in a minute. All right, completion of the Gaik Altar is going to drop you off here at 44.3% EXP. The next location we are heading up to is going to be the Sherikon Necropolis. So I will meet you up here. And uh, yeah, see you there in a second. So here at the Sherikon Necropolis, we are only going to take one quest here. So typically in my leveling guides before, we would complete the whole series of quests here, but this quest does require you to have like 400 Amity, or to be able to continue to play through the quest line rather, needs 400 Amity. So all we're going to do on this instead is the Butcher Llama Meat section, which is why I asked you to bring a Butcher Knife along with you. So go ahead and kill the Llamas and complete this quest. The next quest line, My Precious Sister, takes you up to her sister, and like I was saying, requires you to have 400 Amity with that NPC, so we are going to skip out on that. But that was a pretty easy 1.3% EXP for that first portion of the quest line. The next thing we're going to do is head on over to the Nightcrow Post. Head over to this location on the bridge right here. So you got this little bridge going across. Um, we're going right here on the Nightcrow Post. I'll see you over there. And I guess since I've called out all of the EXP skips throughout the rest of the series so far, I'll call out all of the stuff here though, but through the Sherikon Necropolis, you will eventually get taken up to Yakatum, or if you don't get taken to Yakatum, you can go up to them as well. So these two locations have a bunch of quests. I think it gives you something like 7-ish percent EXP between the two of them after this. But the Yakatum quest lines are stupid long, like killing hundreds and hundreds of Yaks to complete, and then this quest line requires Amity with one of the worst NPCs to get Amity in the game. So I was very happy to be able to drop this portion out of the leveling guide. But if you are short, if you come up short or something, this is a location to get more EXP. But anyway, over here at the Nightcrow Post, we have a ton of quests to pick up. So first options right here from the Supply Officer. Then if you head up the staircase over here, you're going to see another quest that you can pick up right there. Um, you can see that quest line and play through that one. And after completing the quest chain with that NPC down there, if you continue your way up further still, you're going to see another quest that you can pick up right here. And then if you continue up further still into the Nightcrow Post, so just keep making your way up these stairs, just head all the way up to the top, you will see even more quests available up here. So there's one over here in this corner. And then if you head around from that corner over this way, there's another quest out over here. There's a turn in for one of the quests we accepted down below over here. And he also offers another quest. And if you continue wandering around over here, you will see a turn in for another quest with another quest that it offers. Over this far end over here, you'll see a quest to turn in. And I believe that is everything that is available at the top of the Crow Post. So go ahead and complete all of the quests here and complete their consecutive sections until you've completed the Nightcrow Post. I'll see you back in a second. Might be a little late on warning you about this one, but when you get to the quest that offers either logs or rough stones, take the logs as the reward. This is a turn in for a quest we're going to do later on, so it'll save you some time. Also, while you're on your way to turn in the quest Brave Child, you're going to run by another quest right here. Make sure to pick this one up too. All right, after that, you've picked up about 15.6-ish percent EXP, and our next location that we are going to head to is going to be the Tashira Ruins. We are heading to the Node location. You should be able to park your horse up there. I'll meet you over at the Node. All right, so there are two people we are going to accept and play through quest lines from in this location. The first one is Leon, who's the Node Manager NPC sitting right here in the middle of the location. So go ahead and accept his first quest, but don't take any of the repeatable quests. We don't need to worry about those. So we're going to play through Leon's quest line, and we are also, if you head over in this direction, um, you'll see some ruins up on top of this cliff up here. So if you look to the top of the cliff, you should see like up here where my mouse is circling right now, a bunch of ruins head up here. And up here you will see an NPC sitting like precariously perched on a ledge, so you got to get up to this ledge and talk to them to accept the second set of quests that you're going to play through. 
Do note that at some point, one of her quests, you're going to have to accept the next portion from the Black Spirit. I'll pop in and tell you what that quest is when we get there, but otherwise, knock these out and I'll see you in a bit. So after turning in one of the quests with her, the Black Spirit's going to pop up on your screen. You need to take the quest tab in Intervention from the Black Spirit. So make sure to take that quest to continue along with her quest line. Make sure to pay attention and watch out for Garmoth so that it doesn't kill you. Ha 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 ha. And don't worry, if you do get dumpstered by Garmoth, it's not that big a deal. We're going to over-level in the next region anyway, but yeah, um, kind of sucks if you die. One of the quests is going to send you out to the Commit Lumber Camp um, up over in this location. When you get here, make sure to take the second quest, an incidental story, to continue along with the chain from that NPC, um, which is going to send you back over to the uh, Tashira Ruins area. So make sure to continue that quest line. So when you get to the quest, Traces of Retaliation, that's going to send you way the heck out over here. Um, that's when you want to do the intervention from the Black Spirit because it's on the way. So do the intervention from the Black Spirit first and then do the Traces of Retaliation quest. And when your Black Spirit pops up during that quest line, the final portion you need to do is wrapping up the story under the quest tab to complete that quest line. And when you get out here to Cena, she's also going to have a quest line, Dragon Truth Story of the Past, obtained from the Black Spirit. So make sure to pick up that quest. And that is going to send you all the way back over to Duvencroon, so I'll meet you over there. And this should be your full circle moment because we are back where we exactly started this leveling guide like 14 hours ago. So, the next location that we need to head to is going to be in the new snow region where we're going to finish off the leveling guide. And the first location we're going to go to is the first location we went to during the story, which is Camp Balax. So I will meet you over there. All right, so coming in the camp from the southern entrance over here, if you walk through the main gate, main door, you should see a couple of quests. This first quest right here is a fishing quest, so screw those, we ain't dealing with that. But if you walk into the main tent right here, you will see a quest line that you can pick up from this NPC, so take that one. Next, right outside the door, you're going to see a quest from the Cook Rodrigo. If you accept his quest, it is actually an EXP giving quest as well. This is like one of the first times I've ever said to take a green quest here to pick up EXP. And then he provides you a second quest, the best mushrooms in Everfrost, so we'll take that one as well. Continuing it down into the camp, you're going to see an NPC Jorg, take their quest. And then they also have a quest called Thick Scarf, so take that quest. Now the quest together, the Mesma right here for this NPC of Rodrigo is pretty much optional. You don't really need to do that one. We're going to have more than enough EXP, but if you are short of where I am at this point, you can do that one. It sends you over to another location we're going to head to in a little bit, so don't do it right away. We're going to be over at Nor's Perch here in a little bit. But do complete the other quests here. And that's going to put us at 91% EXP. Next location that we are going to head to is going to be Firithra's Belt. Uh, Irithra's Belt. So I will meet you down over here, and all of these locations should be opened up if you follow this leveling guide, because, you know, we started in this region. So we have a couple quests in this city, so first is from the node manager, and one of these quests is going to require you to move this salt sack that's sitting right here down to the water. There's no waypoint marker on your map, you just have to know to move this salt sack, so make sure to do that. But you bring it to this NPC right here, the fish vendor, and make sure to click the chat option to complete the quest. And then the quest down here that you can get from the fisher, don't bother with that one. It's another fish catching fish quest, and we don't do fish catching fish quests because they're dumb. So the next location we're going to head to is going to be Wind Knoll's Perch, after reaching 95% EXP here. And there is one quest at this location from the companion of Knoll, Tumimululin. So take his quest, and we want the Perch for Hawks quest. This quest requires you to go and get some logs, which is why I told you to get a Lumbering Axe earlier on. So just walk outside the front of the camp and cut down the trees. He'll then have a second quest called How Much Do You Know About Hawks? You can take that quest line, which requires you to go run up here and uh, interact with an NPC thing. So in the corner of this room, there's the How to Tame Hawks book that you can uh, interact with to complete that quest. And you can run back down and turn it in. You then have the quest A Special Meal for Hawks, which you could do if you wanted, but I don't feel like doing it because the next region is so much easier and I only need like 2% EXP. So if you wanted to do the quest here for more EXP, as well as the best mushrooms at Everfrost, you can. But the next location we're going to head to is going to be the Citroen Orchard, which is like 13 or 14% EXP for doing literally nothing and walking back and forth, which is going to put us to 61, so yeah. And it's also going to give you way more EXP if you are short. So anyway, I'll meet you up at the Citroen Orchard place up here. So up at the top of the orchard here, you're going to see an NPC sitting here drinking some tea if you interact with them. Go to their quest tab, not the main quest tab. We want to go to the quest tab here in this case. We want foreigners in the Citroen Orchard. Take that quest. It's going to ask you to interact with some NPCs, and basically you're just going to play through this quest line until you hit level 61. Even if you're a couple points short, there's a lot of stuff to do. Make sure to click the chat option when you're doing this quest, because you don't want to pick up their side quests that they have. Just use the chat option. But anyway, after completing two quests there, you're going to ding level 61. Let's get a time here, 1443. 
meaning just under two hours, plus I was editing the YouTube video during that, so yeah, not too bad. Um, what I'm going to do now is continue playing through these quests here. They're only going to award like a tiny fraction of EXP, but I'm going to count how many quests there are in this location so you can see how much more bonus EXP you're going to get, and then I'll show you the other locations as well in this region that you can go to continue leveling if you still are short for some reason. So yeah, you should be 61 by now, you should be closing the video and saying thanks Levi, but if you're not, we're going to give you some more bonus stuff here. So anyway, I'm going to finish off the quest here at Citrin. Do you know at some point her quests are going to turn from yellow to green? You want to continue down her green quest line, special goods at the Citrin Order Orchard quest line. So after completing that quest line through its completion, that was another 7 quests that you would have completed, which would have been another 9% EXP if you were still short. Um, the next location that we are going to head to is going to be the city of Isleton, and once again, as soon as you ding level 61, stop following this guide. There's no reason to continue following this, right? You get pitiful EXP. I got like 0.1 from completing those seven extra quests. Um, but we're going to head to the city of Isleton next for uh, the next portion of the leveling guide. And starting from the northern gate here of Isleton and working our way down the city, you're going to see a couple of quests that we can do. So the first quest is over here on the right with the jeweler Bayan, Bayan Bandi over here. You've got that NPC that will offer a quest line. You then have the NPC right here, Material Vendor Turga, who also has a quest line that you can do. If you continue further down the city, don't worry about that upper left region, there's nothing to do there. Continuing along, you should see an NPC right here. Um, this quest line right here is why I had mentioned to pick up logs from quest rewards earlier, because his quest is to bring logs times 20 over. So if you have 20 logs, you can just turn them in right away and be done with that quest. So a nice little bonus right there if you wanted to do that one. So that is three quests in this location. If you head down over here to the left instead, There'll be another couple of quests that you can pick up right here. This one quest is a chain quest. I believe it has three quests in the chain. Might be off by a little bit. But anyway, that's another seven or eight quests here in the Isleton region that you'll be able to complete if you're still short. So another 10% or so EXP in this location. And that pretty much is it as far as major EXP giving quests in this location. There is one more quest way out over here. If you are a crazy person who wants to go all the way out to Pilgrim's End, there is a quest line that starts out here. It's the left of the labyrinth down here, so way out over here. Sends you through a couple of quests, so um, if you're still short, you can go for that. But you should be well above, right? I've shown you 20% more EXP than you actually needed to reach this level. So um, if this video is going to help you guys, do let me know in the comment section below. Congratulations on reaching level 61. Like I said, it took about another two hours here, which means our total time to reach level uh, 61 was about 14 and a half hours. But once again, I was also editing all the YouTube videos and kind of just standing there AFK while doing that. So I'd say it's probably 13 and a half, 13 hours if you realistically wanted to hammer down and get through this. Um, that's not too far off from the other method of just solo grinding. It takes about 10 hours to grind solo and then do the leveling guide. So uh, yeah, you know, it's up to you, however you want to do it. I think the questing way is a lot more chill helps you to complete the adventure journal. Real piece travel log here that will let you get bonus uh, permanent enhancement chance like that. Boom, plus one permanent fail stacks. Now I gotta do 19,000 quests, LOL. But yeah, it helps you to work towards that goal if you're trying to get those free fail stacks. You can listen to music while you're doing it. You don't have to really worry about getting killed by anybody. So yeah, um, so yeah, that's my pitch here for why you should follow this leveling guide. Um, if this video did help you, once again, do let me know in the comment section below. Also, if you're not subscribed, please consider it. it helps to grow my channel. I would really appreciate the support. Thank you all so much for watching. Look forward to seeing you the next live stream over on Twitch, YouTube video right here, or wherever I happen to see you. Peace.